Oh my God. <laughs> Please stop. This is what happens when Japanese people try to write black characters. I can't. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another episode of Ninja Kamui. We're now into episode four. I am very much looking forward to this because this show, <laughs> this show is crazy. Every episode I keep wondering, how can it get crazier? And they always end up topping themselves. So anyhow, in the last episode, we had the joining of forces between Higan and Mike and, oh goodness, what's her name, Emma, because they realized that this is a big problem. Mike is finally understanding he's not gonna get any help from the department, at least not initially. So they basically realized they gotta work together and see if they can go up this chain and figure out who exactly is involved and stop it at the head. And Mike is under the impression he's going to arrest Higgin at the end. Uh, it's funny. That's a funny thought. But anyhow, <laughs> we also see that Emma is a bit of a tech genius. She had a little punch buggy full of tech and she's been doing her research on Alza, which we dis discovered is a global technical conglomerate that is slowly but surely turning into a monopoly and that there's pretty much a definitely a connection between them and the ninjas. And we saw that confirmation in the episode when the face, I don't know if he's the leader or the face of Alza, the blonde guy and the leader of the ninjas met together very briefly. But essentially it looks like the ninjas are the ones who are making sure that there's no impediments to Alza's growth and Alza in return is providing these ninjas with tech that is bleeding edge. So Higan is still an issue though. We find out that the weird creepy man who has the robots sent a killer after Higan. It was not, uh, the robot did not succeed, but it looks like it's just the beginnings for this man. I think he just sent that robot to kind of test Higan out. But anyway, Higan's definitely gonna continue to be haunted by this man until he takes him out personally. And we see that there's a little bit of discord there between the leader of Alza and the head ninja because apparently the team that was sent to the restaurant in episode two that blew everything up, they weren't supposed to go. They went on their own and it looks like the leader of Alza is trying to learn about ninjas to potentially create, I guess, mechanisms or weapons that work well against them, I'm not sure. But obviously you can see how that would be an issue for the head ninja as well. Interesting stuff dropped. Not too much action until the end, but yes, we had Higun get a call at the end of the last episode from somebody who knew his name and it was enough to make him seem a bit shocked about that. So I'm ready to find out who that was and jump into the episode. Just before I do though, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I drop new episodes to this show or anything else that I am watching, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And please show some love to the video if you're feeling it. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. この器は傍受できないようにしてある。ハジュリだ。街は行方不明の防犯システムに守られている。お前一人でそれを買いくぐり侵入することは不可能だ。ありがとう。我を知らねえの仕業こそ忍びのものの後者とはいえ。だ、
That's right, let him know. <gasps> Respectfully, you're not the best at your job. I do. I'm thinking that's a no. Man, he's just letting all the secrets go, huh? Probably because he doesn't think they're going to survive this, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's got to hurt for you, eh, buddy? Because you chose the, the job over your family? Yeah. yeah, that's all you, weirdo. I don't trust this man at all. What is with your obsession, bro? Is this is just the girl now. Are they? Okay, I'll give him that. At least he's smart enough not to make that assumption. Oh my god. Please stop. This is what happens when Japanese people try to write black characters. I can't. Is he a magician? I'm glad you recognize. Keep choking, please. Wow. Homie's literally Darth Vader. He used the force. Did you not just see him ninja choke somebody out from across the table? I'm sorry, did someone turn into a bird? Is this the Reaper? Ah, so you need him. You want to know about his jutsu. So he got his one in a million. He's got some jutsu that they want. Damn! I blinked! Bye. I don't know who you were, bro, but your security sucked. Does anyone actually stamp top secret documents with big a big red top secret on them? うん。忍びなを与える。おお。ひが。ザイ。マリ。この城に王義を伝授する。ああ。王義は己の身の人し、決して他の者に明かしてはならない。ああ。王義は己の身の人し、決して他の者に明かしてはならない。ああ。王義
Wait, isn't this... Those silos are like what he had at his old farm. Damn, they're serious. Got it. What about underground? Damn, you know, if they were not up to anything shady, it seems like a lot of security. Oh, great, there's more. Cocky! Ah, thanks. This is an indirect way of saying that I somewhat care about you, sir. Cute. Aww. So you and he gonna have something in common. You know what it's like to lose family. <laughs> that was great. Ooh, this camera work in this show is amazing. Just wanna put that out there again. Ooh. No one there. Nothing to see here. Keep walking. What shoes are these? I need to get me a pair. Let's hope you kept up, bro! Not the spittle! Not your sweat! Oh god, okay. Damn. I can't believe his sweat triggered the damn sensors. That's insane. Weren't you told not to pursue him? Shit. Well, that was all for nothing. And you ended there. I hate y'all. Okay, so he moved on his own, right? Because we saw that he was told by the master twice not to interfere and not to go after him, but he did. And I guess he must have known that that was the way he would take because it's the only way to come in. All right, well, this is gonna be an interesting dynamic to find out what's going on. We now see that Zai, AKA the Reaper, was one of the three top ninjas that all got their own secret art that no one knows about. And he wasn't sent to go after Higan. Like we know that wasn't, he wasn't the one to go and take out the family, even though it looks like he asked to be the one. But yeah, looking at the backstory, we see that they were close. We see that he was the one who initiated the pact that they were always gonna work together. He still has the cup from the day that they made their pact. Like I said, it, it is broken. It was clearly broken and put back together. So I don't know. I don't know what to think about this Psy guy. Like maybe he wants his brother back. I mean, it's too late now, obviously. It's already too late. He's excommunicated. I mean, let me not say that. I get the sense that that leader wants Higan. He does not want to lose him. I think if he actually could believe that Higan would come back and be part of the fold, he'd take him because who doesn't want that weapon at their side? But would he ever really trust him again, right? I, I don't know that he would do that, especially if he went as far as having a family and did what he did. But yeah, I don't know. The Sai Higan thing is going to be interesting, I believe. We'll see whether or not there's any of Sai still in there, the old Sai, but we didn't get to see what happened after he found them in that cave after the failed mission, because I think he would have figured out that, well, we already know that Higan was supposed to return to base and leave her if she failed, which she was the one who failed, right? She hesitated. She didn't take out the parents, which I get, or the mom and daughter. But yeah, we see she tried to end her life. Like she was like, okay, I, I failed, I need to go. And Higan stopped her because he was already in love with her. So I don't know, I feel like we're getting a situation, a story of where maybe Zai felt like they were a, tri like a trio, like they were supposed to be this, this close, trio but then two of the trio fell in love and he probably started to feel a bit betrayed and left out when that happened maybe and understandable i guess if that's kind of the closest thing that he felt that he had a family which again i know they weren't supposed to have family but how can you not like the idea that anyone can be complete completely emotionally detached from anyone their whole lives is stupid it's just it's impossible unless you are actually a social sociopath like humans we need connection we're gonna seek it in one way or another so anyway I'm getting the sense that Zai feels like he was betrayed because these two should have been his lifelong friends, like that code that they came up together, that oath. And then these two broke the oath by not only kind of choosing each other, but then leaving and leaving him alone. So I feel like we're gonna get a bit of the broken hearted friend trope with him. I'm wondering if he showed up for this. I don't know that he showed up in that underground place there to really, 
I guess, sorry, I'm just putting my thoughts together. I, I'm trying to figure out if he showed up because like I said, we know he was ordered not to. He was told by their master to leave, like not to face off against Hegon at all. And again, I don't know if that's because the master knows that they're close or knew that they were close, but I get the feeling either he did it for himself because I have a feeling he just wants to talk to Hegon. Like I feel like there's a conversation that he's been meaning to have with him for a minute. And again, it's either gonna be because he wants to try to convince Hegon to come back so he can have his brother back, or he just wants his own personal revenge because he feels like Hegon owes him for leaving him. I don't know, we'll have to see. We know very little about the Reaper. He's had like three lines so far, not even three words, I should say, since we've seen him. So yeah, we'll have to see. There's definitely something going on there though. Definitely something going on there. But something's going on with his eyes right now too. I'm trying to figure out why his eyes look so glazed over. So I don't know if that's because something's happened to him or because there's like uh, some Alzatec in him. I'm not sure, we'll have to find out. But speaking of Alzatec, well, I was right what I said last episode, clearly the leader of Alza is trying to study the ninjas because he wants to create his own weapons and possibly robots that are either equal to ninjas or at least able to take them out. And as I said before, the leader of the ninja clan should be worried about that because that's gonna put his position in this whole arrangement in jeopardy. But clearly that, the leader of Alza is not a dummy, right? You don't want to be under the thumb of anyone if you can help it. And uh, right now the ninjas could take him out in any minute and he knows that. So he's trying his best to learn and figure out how to how to best them. And he wants to learn from Hegon. As he said, I don't want Hegon to go just yet because he's someone that has even the ninjas nervous. So that's who I want to learn from. That's who I want my machines to learn from. And we see that even the leader of the ninjas does not want Hegon killed, he wants him taken alive because like he said, we need him to tell us his secret art because they believe that it's the secret art that brought him back from the dead. And that is a huge secret art to know, <laughs> right? Like who doesn't wanna be effectively immortal, right? So they wanna find out what he's all about. They wanna know his secret and they can't find that out if he's gone. So they want him taken alive if possible. And then I guess they're gonna try to torture his secret out, art out of him. But I feel like there's anybody who's gonna hold out till the very end, it's gonna be him, especially since he got us nothing left to live for. Like you took the one thing he might've given it up for. So yeah, anyway, interesting, interesting developments here. And I'm wondering who his inside person is. I was right about the bird. I mean, no one turned into a bird. I was like, these ninjas can do a lot of things, but if some of them can turn into birds, that's some next level stuff. But it looks like the bird is actually tech. The bird is who's been walking around, flying around and eyeing stuff and finding out what's going on. I'm thinking it's not a ninja. I'm thinking that this bird has just been following these ninja, following the ninja leader and finding out as much as he can about the ninja way, because obviously these ninjas have no idea that these birds have real eyes and ears. So anyway, interested to know who that is. Who is this benefactor that's helping our guy out from the inside, or at least from the outside who's figured out as a tech, but this sucks because Kegon not being able to get to his objective, I think it's gonna tip Alza off that they have somebody who either got into the network or is a spy inside. So that kind of lost that advantage right there. But anyway, we're very early in the season. So we're definitely gonna get another chance at some point. But yeah, another great episode. We got a lot more backstory. Oh, and I forgot. We also found out some more about Mike. We find out that unfortunately, he lost his daughter uh, from a, looks like it was a car accident. And unfortunately his daughter was a casualty of that. But I get the feeling, I, I have to probably go back and reread, but I think I got the feeling his wife was saying that she's not sure that it was a car accident. She thinks it might've been a ripple effect of the fact that Mike is an FBI officer and they do tend to rack up enemies. And anyway, we see that she was trying to call him and let him know what was going on. And because he was working, he, he ignored her calls and that was not the call to ignore. So my guess is that their marriage was over effectively at that point. So now we know why Mike is kind of kamikaze in the way he acts, right? He, the way he throws himself into danger because he doesn't really feel like he's got anything left to live for, so to speak. But anyway, we see that his partner, Emma, feels very close to him and she's been kind of looking out for him. And she let him know that even though she can't work with him directly right now, she still wants him to take care of himself. So anyways, he's off trying to meet other contact who might be able to help them out with this Alza stuff. So yeah, we're seeing our team kind of spread out and work the way that they have to, but it was good to get some background and understanding on the way they are. And as I said, Mike and Keegan now have something in common around the loss of someone, a loss of a child, which is a very horrible thing for anyone to have to experience, but a unique trauma that they can probably build some common ground on as they continue to build whatever it is that they have right now. So yeah, another great episode. I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed watching with me and I will see you in the next one.